Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the 2022 Book Excellence Award winner in medicine and Amazon Top 20 fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. In part one of the series, we gave an overview of diabetes, including the types, how the body uses glucose to generate energy, the incidence in the population, and what to look out for in terms of signs and symptoms. We also briefly touched on two common diabetic emergencies, low blood sugar related hypoglycemia and very high blood sugar related diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. To be able to treat high blood glucose, the family medic must first know what the normal value should be. There is some slight variation of what's normal depending on the source. A urine glucose test involves dipping a special test strip in a urine sample. The kidney eliminates excess glucose from the body, so elevated urine levels means there's an elevated blood level. Unfortunately, urine glucose tests aren't very accurate. Whenever possible, blood is used for a more accurate reading Levels can be checked while fasting, not eating for about eight hours, one to two hours after eating, or randomly. Blood glucose readings depend on whether a person is normal, diabetic, or quote, pre-diabetic, unquote. Pre-diabetes is when your blood sugar is impaired, higher than normal, but not high enough to officially call it diabetes. Almost all type two diabetics were pre-diabetic earlier in life. The CDC estimates that one in three Americans today may indeed be pre-diabetic. Another useful blood test is the hemoglobin A1C or glycohemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein in blood cells that gives them their red color. In diabetics, sugar binds to a higher percentage of red blood cells than normal. If the percentage of sugared cells is excessive, it's the result of poor control over the past three months or so around the average lifespan of, of a red blood cell. A1Cs are good because anyone can have a bad random glucose test. It's useful to have one that gives you an idea of a patient's control over a longer period of time. Having a higher level of sugar than normal in your blood causes damage to various organs. Many of the complications were experienced by my son that I'm going to be talking about right now. He was a brittle diabetic who was poorly controlled. They include cardiovascular disease. Diabetes greatly increases the risk of heart, blood vessel, and circulation problems. It doubles the risk of coronary artery disease, which leads to chest pain, heart attack, stroke, and much more. Impaired blood flow to the lower extremities causes minor cuts and scrapes to heal more slowly and be more prone to infection. Diabetics are much more likely to require amputation of a toe, like my son did, foot or leg than non-diabetics. Then there's kidney damage. Kidney damage is also known as nephropathy. Diabetes damages the ability of the kidney to filter waste toxins from the body. If it's bad enough, the kidneys actually fail, leading to the need for dialysis just to stay alive. Eye damage. The tiny blood vessels of the retina are disturbed by elevated glucose levels, a condition known as retinopathy. In severe cases, retinopathy leads to blindness, as it did in my son. Diabetes also increases the risk of other eye problems, such as cataracts and glaucoma. Nerve damage, also called neuropathy. Well, high glucose levels damage the nerves. This is most evident in the lower extremities. Impaired nerves cause tingling, burning, pain, and numbness. The symptoms usually begin at the ends of the toes and spreads upward. In some cases, complete loss of feeling may occur. For men, it actually can lead to troubles in the bedroom. Skin conditions. Those with high glucose levels are more likely to have bacterial and especially fungal infections. A very high percentage of people with diabetes have that. Hearing impairment also occurs. Loss of hearing is not uncommon in those with diabetes. Diabetes during pregnancy can lead to overly large babies, causing complications with labor and delivery. Even stillbirths can occur. Mothers will have a higher tendency to develop high blood pressure and other serious medical issues as well. Some also believe that diabetics are more likely to develop mental issues such as depression, maybe even Alzheimer's disease, also known as senile dementia. Although most of the complications manifest later in life, poor control led to my son experiencing kidney, eye, foot, and heart disease in his late 20s. Next time we're going to discuss treatment options for diabetes, some very controversial, both on and off the grid. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. 
Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical supplies and knowledge, by the way, with the entire line of books and products at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.